Hello, everyone, and welcome to this video on Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video, I will attempt to predict the future price of Bitcoin using machine learning and Facebook's or Meta's Profit, which is a open source forecasting tool developed by Facebook's core data science team. All right, so I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com, and I'm on it because it makes it easy to get started programming in Python. So if you're going to program along with me, just go to this website, log in with your Google account, and then to get started writing your Python code, click on File and click on New Notebook in Drive, which will open up a new tab for you, and then it'll open up a new cell for you. Now in the cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I need for this program. So I'm going to import pandas as PD, and then from profit, I'm going to import profit with a capital P, and then I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, and I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left, which will let me know if I made any mistakes. Okay, so before we continue, if you like the videos on this channel, then click that subscribe and like button. Also, you can get the code or the data set or just support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash computer science. I will leave a link for that in the description below. Also, everything in this video is educational and purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and, and continue with the code. So I want to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And this, of course, creates a new cell for me. All right, so now I'm going to get the Bitcoin data. All right, and to do this, I'm going to create a variable called BTC underscore data, and I'm going to set it equal to PD dot read underscore CSV. And then I need to put in the name of the, the file that I'm going to use, which will be BTC underscore data dot CSV. So I'm going to run this cell, and I will get an error. So let's go ahead and run it. And we can see that I got an error message, and that's because I need to upload this data set to Google. So let's come over here to this files icon, click on upload, and let's click on btc underscore data.csv. All right, so I get a little warning. It's OK, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to exit out this pane, and then I'm going to rerun this cell here. And now we see everything is good. OK, so next I'm going to, oops. Let me get rid of this here. All right. So next, I'm going to show the data. So I'm just going to type BTC underscore data. And I'm going to run this cell here. And now we can take a look at our data set. So we can see we have all of these columns here. And we have about 3,602 rows of data, those seven columns up top. And we see that we have data on Bitcoin from January 1st, 2015 to November 10th, 2024. So about nine or 10 years worth of data. All right, so I'm gonna create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to prepare the data for profit. So I'm gonna type BTC underscore data, and I'm gonna set this equal to BTC underscore data. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, to basically make a copy of just two of the columns. So I'm going to make a copy of our date column and a copy of our close price column. All right, so I'll type dot copy here. And I'm going to put some comments. So here I'm just going to put select only the date and close column from, from our data frame. All right. And create a copy of this subset. All right. So let's go ahead and run this cell. That looks good. And you know what else I'm going to do in this cell? I'm also going to rename the columns. 
to DS and Y. And this is required by profit. So I'm going to create a, or actually, yes, I'm going to create two new columns, DS and Y. And we're going to do that by typing BTC underscore data dot columns and set it equal to DS comma Y. OK, and let me put some comments in here. So here we're just basically renaming the column to BS and to Y. And this is required again by profit. And I'll put that, which is required by profit. All right, so let's go ahead and run the cell. Perfect. OK, so next I want to ensure the date column is in date time format, and I want to remove time zone information. So I'm going to type BTC underscore data DS, and I'm going to set this equal to ED dot to date time. I'm just going to tab over. It looks like the suggestion is pretty good. So PD dot to date time TC underscore data DS dot DT dot DZ underscore localize and then I want none. Also I didn't explain what DS and D DS and Y stand for. All I told you was that this was required by profit. Well DS stands for date time and Y stands for the value to forecast. So Y is the value to forecast. DS is or stands for date time. All right. OK, so now let me come back down here to this cell now that that was explained. And let me put in some comments. So here I am converting the BS column to date time format and removing any time zones. or any time zone information. And this is to ensure compatibility with profit. OK, so let's go ahead and run this cell. Let's create a new cell. And now I want to ensure the Y column is a float. So I'm going to type etc underscore data. And we're going to input Y here. And we're going to set it equal to btc underscore data Y dot as type and then float. OK. So here we are just converting the Y column to a float type to ensure numerical operations can be performed. OK, so let's go ahead and run this cell. And let's create a new cell. OK, so last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check for any missing values, and I'm going to drop them. So I'm going to type btc underscore data dot drop in A. And I'm going to set in place to be equal to true, so it does it in the data set. And all I'm doing here is I'm removing any rows that contain NAN, which stands for not a number. So it's going to remove any rows that contain NAN values to ensure the data set is clean and ready for modeling. OK, so let's go ahead and run this cell. Let's create a new cell. And now I think we're ready for our model. So let's initialize and train the model. So here I'm going to type model equals profit. And what this is doing here, this is creating an instance of the profit forecasting model. OK, so next we need to train the model. So that's easy enough just by typing model.fit 
and we're going to put in our data, which is BTC underscore data. So here we're fitting the profit model to the data. And what we're really doing is just training the model. OK, so I think that looks good. I'm going to run this cell. And we're good. So let's create a new cell here. And now let's create a future data frame. All right. So I'm going to create a variable called future. I'm going to set it equal to model dot make underscore future underscore data frame periods. And I'm going to set it equal to 365. So what is this doing? This is creating a data frame extending 365 days into the future from the last date in the training data for predictions. OK, so let's go ahead and run this cell. Create a new cell. And now let's predict future prices. So I'm going to create a variable called forecast. And I'm going to set it equal to model.predict. And we want to put in future. OK, so here I'm using the train model to make predictions for each date in the future data frame. All right, so let's go ahead and run this cell. And let's create a new cell. All right, so now in this cell, I'm going to plot the forecast. So first, I need to generate a plot of the historical data. The also need to plot the fitted data, or the fitted values, and the forecasted values. So I'm going to create a variable called fig, which will be short for figure size. And I'm going to set it equal to model.plot. And we're going to input forecast. Again, we're just generating a plot. And let's see. I'm going to add a title, some labels, and maybe a legend. So I'm going to type plt dot title and we're going to put Bitcoin price prediction and then I'm just going to tap this over and we're going to have our label on the x-axis to be called date and on the y-axis we will have price in USD I'm just going to finish that and actually I'm just going to get rid of USD here we're just going to just put price why not and I'm going to type plt.legend and plt.show OK, so let's go ahead and run this. All right. And now we can see our future prices. So we can see the observed data points, which is in our data set. We see them all here in black. And then the forecast line in this dark blue and the uncertainty intervals, which are in light blue. So between these points is what we expect the future price of Bitcoin to be. Of course, down here would be the lower expected price and up here would be the higher expected price. And it does look like the legend is slightly in the way, but you can still see a little bit here that the price is somewhere near $120,000. OK, so that looks pretty good, but let's actually see what those values are instead of just looking at this plot here and kind of making a assumption of how close we think it is to a certain number. So I'm going to create a new cell. And here I'm going to type show the last five predicted prices. And we are just going to put, I like forecast.tail. I'm just going to tap this over. And here I'm going to input ds, comma, y hat, 
comma y hat underscore lower. This is our our lower uncertainty interval level. And I want the upper one as well. So y hat underscore upper. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So now we can see our date. So for this expect uh, for this date here, November 6, 2025, I can expect or I'm predicting that Bitcoin's future price is one hundred one thousand three hundred sixty four dollars and about forty eight cents. That's what I'm expecting. And. I'm expecting it to be at its lowest eighty seven thousand five hundred twelve dollars and about sixty five cents and then at its highest. I'm expecting it to be about $116,605.06. And this is on November 6, 2025. All right. And you can read the rest of the rows basically in the same way. OK. So that's it. Thanks for watching this video. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters on Patreon.com. Again, if you would like to become a supporter of this channel, I will leave a link to the Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash computer science in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a beautiful day, and I will see you in the next video.